If you're looking for a good drink of good rum, yeah. Jamaica is probably a good place to get it. Because on every street corner, in every town in Jamaica, there is a rum bar. But if you're interested in spirit of a holy order, Jamaica is also a good place to get it. Because across the street from each of those bars, right in front of each of those bars, is a church. Now I don't know the extent to which rum has inspired Jamaican composers. <laughs> <laughs> But I know that the church has played an important role in the nurturing development of composers, like Noah Dexter. He was born on December 21, 1938, in a rural town in Portland, Jamaica. It's on the <coughs> northeastern end of the island. And by the way, it rains there every day of the year in that parish. He got lessons in piano and organ and played for church um, in his formative years. He also has a certificate in church music, um, church choir training from a college in the United Kingdom. Church folk, non-church folk rather, when they want entertainment, they go to parties and concerts to listen to secular music. But choral music in the Western art tradition is created in the church, it's performed in the church by and large, and choral music concerts are pretty much supported by church folk. So if Noah Dexter wants his work to be performed, what kind of music do you think he's going to uh, create? Sacred music. Which explains why all of Noah Dexter's choral music in the Western <coughs> art tradition are sacred music. That also explains why the four pieces our choir is going to be singing for us this afternoon, for you this afternoon, are sacred music. The psalm is very popular in Jamaica. Everybody reads a psalm, especially if you're in trouble, if you're in financial straits, you read a psalm a day. If you're sick, you read a psalm a day. If you're in prison, you read a psalm a day. If you're lonely, you read a psalm a day, at least until your trouble pass. That is why these settings that were some three of the settings this afternoon are psalms. They are extremely popular in Jamaica. The first item we're going to be singing is Psalm 27, a setting of Psalm 27, very, very popular also. Um, you might understand why the text of the psalm, which talks about fear and openness, <coughs> fear and getting God's help with fear and helping to get over fear and all that. In an environment where people grapple with a thousand homicides a year. Psalm 27, Chamber Singers. <coughs>
Jamaica is a, an island country in the Caribbean. It is about 4,000 square miles in area, about 90 miles south of Cuba, and about 120 miles west of Haiti. It was ruled by Britain from about 1655 until August 6, 1962, when it got, got its independence from Britain. About the same time when Jamaica uh, became independent, there were people, artists and scholars like Noah Dexter, who started trying to find ways to incorporate indigenous materials in their work. One of the things, first thing that Dexter tried was to incorporate the mental rhythm, the mental rhythm of uh, traditional folk form. And I'm going to uh, ask Quark to help me right now to give you an, an, an idea of the mental rhythm. <laughs> Thank you. 
successful as a composer in Jamaica, choral composer of art music, you, you, have to be, you have to have an entrepreneurial spirit, like Handel or Bach in the Baroque for other years. Um, now that was also different. In 1962, he started the Kingston Singers, the Kutubi Singers, he trained them, took them on tours all over the world. And then in 1977, he became musical director of the Universal Singers, where he developed that choir to become the de facto musical ambassadors of the university. They have been on tours all over the world, they have recorded extensively. And he also developed this concept with colleague, the late Rex Nefford Road Scholar called Choral Theater. Now this concept involves preparing a choir, as is usual, but also having them perform in a setting where all the musical numbers are staged, sometimes with a wide range of movements from subtle movements to full scale hand dancing, with one caveat that the singing should never be compromised. These are usually full blown, full scale productions. They have a staff of wardrobe people and lighting and sound and makeup and you know, it's really a full production. Now these singers are expected to be good musicians and singers, but on top of that, they have to be always expressive and animated. So right now, this choir is going to demonstrate for you how expressive and animated those choirs need to be to be successful. As they sing for you a setting of Psalm 150.
official language of Jamaica is English. But there's a dialect that we speak <coughs> called Patwa. Now that Patwa that I alluded to earlier, a, a bridge between the carryover British people who wanted to keep the British culture going and the people and the people who were uncomfortable with their indigenous culture also raged in the use of language. There were people who would never be caught dead speaking anything but English. Why there were people who would use and speak Patwa every opportunity. As long as they could get away with it, they would speak Patwa. Now that context decided to find a way to deal with this battle by setting his works in English primarily with a smattering of patwa. Smattering of patwa. So you could perform the works the way he has written them with English, with a smattering of patwa, in actual performance, or you could substitute some of the English words for more patwa words, or you could substitute any God forbid, any Papa word with English words. <laughs> or you could sing the English words with Papa pronunciation. But one thing you should never do is to try to sing Papa words with English pronunciation. That's usually ground for ridicule. So the choir is going to help me share with you some of the text of this next song that we were singing for you. It's called Sing the, sing the, sing the Chords, if you are singing it in English. But the actual title here is Sing the Chords. So there is the word sing which you all know, the word chorus which you all know, but there's a patwa, D, right in the middle of it. Sing the chorus. Cla you, why you, that the part of a year. You could have said, sing the chorus, clap your hand. Uh, beat the conga, play your pan. Beat the conga, play your pan. Um, spread the news throughout the land, and the D is dropped, is left off. If you want to sing English, you add the D. That that's the part of word that. That Jesus is born. And choir, how would you say Jesus in part of? Jesus. 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 Jesus, our Savior, is born. Do you know this story how the King of Glory come to earth? And by the way, he, he has here E A R T H, which is how we know to spell the word. But in part where you would leave the H off and say earth. And you also add a glottal stop to the vowel. So instead of earth, you say earth. Say that. Earth. Everyone? Earth. Yes. Every unaccompanied, every unaccompanied vowel, there's always a glottal stop. Earth. A baby boy in a manger. How do you say boy in part of choir? Boy. boy. Why? Why? Everyone say why? Why? Yes. Why? But the world, the D's left out the world, the word world, but the word them, them is the plural for world. By the way, that's also the part of them. But you pluralize words by adding D E M in part one. Them, the world, them, people, plural. The world, them, did not know that was God on earth, or that, that was God on earth below, and treat the Son of God on earth like a stranger. O great God above us, truly you do love us. Your cords of love around us, no one, no one can sever. How would you say sever in part of our? Sever. 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 May we always do our part. May we always do our part. Show the world your loving choir. Art. Art. 
Samuel prays. I notice he has the English for oh, your right here. He doesn't have sing your prayer, but sing your prayers. You can change it. Or you can keep your whatever whatever floats your boat. And glorify you forever. So we're gonna sing for you at this time. Sing the chorus in Papua. <coughs>
Renaissance motets to classical Baroque stuff to romantic music, modern music, and local art music. And uh, he also writes for musical a musical theatre production that takes place, runs in Jamaica for six months. Uh, and they also do arrangements, choral arrangements <coughs> and pop music. <coughs> now the the actual dancing is usually only with Jamaican folk music or when they're doing their pop music. They never dance when they're doing classical music. There is some subtle movement and staging, but and as I said, um, most of the choreography of the group was done by Professor Rex Nicholas. And pretty much I know his mantra is the singing, the singing is is, 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 is paramount, it's the most important thing. In the entire, whatever, everything that's going on, the most important thing is the singing of the choir. So they never introduce a movement that compromises singing. And if, if, if you try something, and I've actually worked with it in, in a various you know, um, scenarios. If he tries something and he, he detects any kind of depreciation in the singing, he's going to change it. He's going to take it away from it. Um, it. A lot has to do with the abilities of the singers, you know, like people like me who have two left feet, for example. <laughs> you know, he would, he would give me different movements from somebody else who's a good singer.
choirs that do sacred music with also different concerts. Yes, bro. Oh. How widely known is Dexter and his music outside of Jamaica? It's, he's, he's known in the diaspora, pretty much. Um, the Anglican Church has, yes, yeah, has commissioned work from him. Um, so he, he's known in the Anglican Church, I guess, around the world, because they, they have a, a hymnal about that his work is in. Uh, and, he, and, he's, and he's known around the Caribbean. He has done work around the Caribbean. But he's not known a lot outside of the Jamaican diaspora. Yes. I kind of want to get you to give me a personal point of view, and I want to preface this. For those of you who are all positioned, I'm going to say this in this way. If you are particularly a white conductor of choral music, you're going to live in peril when it comes to the American spiritual and gospel. I, mean, I have been criticized. You know, if you see music like, say, Chester Harrison, he puts dialect in the music, you're going to do this. Ring the bell, not ring the bell, but it's, it says to do it. Then you do it, and you know, then you work for someone like I did in Iowa, who immediately thinks you're doing blackface when you do the dialect. And then I've had other composers, like recently Raul Dilworth, who doesn't put dialect in the music, and we sing it without dialect. And someone comes up after the concert, literally a few weeks ago, and criticizes me for not doing dialect. And I've been to a conference with Brazil Bernard and Jester Harrison and and Larry Farrow were all sitting in a panel and they couldn't agree on what to do. So we can't even get good information on which way to go. And I'm struck by the fact that Noel Dexter saying, add a little bit, add a lot, add nothing. Seems to be pretty much an open idea of, but as a Jamaican, are you either happy or okay if you do no dialect or patois, or if they do too much, are you suspended when they do it badly? How do you feel about it? <laughs> I mean, you see what I'm saying? Because we live in this world where everybody has a different opinion and we get in trouble all the time. Right. Um, personally, I'm totally comfortable with singing and speaking part of, singing part of 100%. But I understand if somebody else is not as comfortable with it. And so if I see somebody perform the work and they're not doing 100%, or 50%. I understand why they would choose to do what they do. Um, my parents were not comfortable with it. I couldn't speak Patois in my home when I was growing up because my parents were British folk. They, they felt that you, know, that's, that's, you have to speak properly. And by speaking properly, they meant speaking English, even though everybody in the country understands Patois. Um, so I, I, it's just a personal decision. And I personally, I said, I am. Totally happy if I see people singing these songs with 100% changing the word to pack for that's possible and doing it that way. I'm comfortable. It's Jamaican, it's a, a dialect, it's, you know, I'm comfortable with it. But I understand that some of this is not equally as comfortable and choose to do it a different way. But you don't find a politically correct offense at doing or not doing it. I don't. Um, that's, yeah, I'm getting that. Because yes. I think when I'm talking to people, I find a strong opinion one or the other. What, what I find offensive is when somebody somebody talks as if doing dialect is wrong. Like I've had people have, have some spirituals here with dialect and people correct me, my pronunciation. You know, as if my pronunciation is wrong. When I know that the reason they're correcting me is because they are not comfortable with dialect and I am comfortable with dialect. So that I find an offense when you talk about masculinity. Um, you know, you are right and I am wrong, and you're correct. I also feel like the, and I don't know this, that you're doing us a favor of when you talk to us because I get the feeling you clean up your path off to a point of view. I wouldn't use the word clean up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe maybe cure it, get it for us for good. Because I have a feeling that if you were speaking to someone who spoke path as well, we might struggle to, am I not correct, we might struggle to understand what's being said? Yeah, there would be no point in me talking to this audience in talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we would be wasting, uh, you know, 30 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, but but um, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm cleaning it up by not speaking it, because it's quite clean to me. Um, it's, I think it's legitimate, it's, a leg it's legitimate, but there's no point in talking, using it, for people who don't understand it. Yes, I'm a, against wasting 30 minutes always. But could, could, could we share one minute with you when you speak? We've had more on the subject. 
Well, we could not do that if we want. We could not do that, but we don't think that makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Pronunciation is not standard. <laughs> Just like when it comes to South, people say y'all and I'm fixing to do so and so. <laughs> um, when you go to some parts of Jamaica, the people come, the people from uptown, for example, when they speak Patwa, they their Patwa is a little different from the people who are from downtown. You know, um, yeah, it's a little different. It's not. <laughs> right. But somebody from town said same thing from the now. There's no draw to it. It is it's it's a little different. And yeah, it's it's a little different. But it's the same kind of thing. Pretty much. And I'm finding, this was a great experience for me, because I'm finding that I never thought of codifying or explaining in a some kind of kind of a scholarly manner how Plato is pronounced or anything like that. So this was a great exercise for me. Because um, I'm now kind of thinking along those lines. One of the things that I you know, is kind of thinking out loud, one of the issues for me is when you talk about European music and the blueprint there is homogeneous uh, ideal performance and when you get to certain types of American music there's a heterogeneous point of view. Many possible performances are correct, you know, if Lena Horne singing Stormy Weather is different than Harold Arlen, there's more than one acceptable performance. And the reason I say that is because we in choral music are so living on that edge and we want to unify behavior among our singers in normal situations. And if you're standing in front of a group trying to pat off, how important would it be to you to get unified patois? Or if you're singing a spiritual that would might lend itself a more not unified approach, is that an issue for you? Unified patois. In other words, I wanted to say I'll sing duh the same way. You know, and what five different ways of singing duh or No, okay. Yeah, but yeah, it would it would definitely be critical for me to get a good choral sound yeah. to have unified vowels. The same the same the, the same thing. This far I've done pretty, I've done really great at it. I pick it up pretty fast. But I still hear every once in a while them trying to lead back to English, you know. But um, it's important to get a nice chorus song for the for the, the vowels to be to be uniform. Yeah. And, and and a great chorus sound is important. It's really really important. They, they, these these guys, um, they, they spend a lot of time. You know, training individual singers and getting a, a really good sound. Yes, sir. Um, two little ones. Say you had a choir that you were uh, teaching a song to in Jamaica, and half of them were from downtown Canada. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What did you do? Mm -hmm. uh, what could you insist on a unified uh, set of values, or would they each be authentic? Yeah. Well. I, I'm going to, I, I'm guided by a good chorus sound. I'm trying to get a good chorus sound. What I, what, this, the vowels that I have in my head, that's the vowel I'm going to communicate to the choir. So if there's any deviation from that vowel, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to say, look, this is what I want. So everyone gives me the same vowel. So the same way that, that we don't try to teach, try to directly project from spoken English into uh, a sung English choral sound. Right. Something similar with that clock. Exactly. Okay, then um, my second question is related to the first. Okay. Where you had the two versions of that clock. Right. Uh, how about rhythms? When you, when you uh, find in composed works like Dexter's uh, rhythms that come out of tradition, uh -huh. uh, are you trying to copy them from tradition? And if so, homogeneous or heterogeneous? Or are you feeding them from through some sort of stylistic uh, filter, like you're doing with the you know, vowel sounds. Yeah, well, as it pertains to rhythm, I'm going to, I'm going to, 
teach the choir the rhythm that's written. Whatever, ryth whatever rhythm is written, that's what I'm going to teach the choir. Well, just as we when we perform the own music, right? What is written is is uh, modified by our knowledge and our performance practice. Right. Do you do the same thing with rhythms that come from? So 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 what I would do what I would do apart from what is written is <coughs> try to communicate to the choir. Be uh, guided by word stress, for example, or style. Like the mentor yesterday, I gave the choir the the, the sheet the. the Mentor sheet, mm -hmm. and there were some markings on the paper for guitar, for guitar strokes, and they probably felt that those um, sections should have been accented, and so I had to point out to them that this is where the accent falls. Ignore those marks. This is where the accent falls. So the rhythms are there, and they, they, they were singing the rhythms accurately, but in terms of stress, I had to point out to them. For mentor, to feel like mentor, and to work to make me dance or want to dance, this is where the accent falls. So is that bad acting? Is that bad? Uh, it's it's um I copied it and didn't clean it up properly. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else before we close up? I have one more question. Um, is uh, it's not difficult to understand what you're saying. Are there words in Pascal that are completely different? Because when I hear you speak and when I hear them sing Pascal, it sounds just like a modified version of English. So, I mean, is there anything that's completely different where we would not be able to understand anything? There are there are a lot of words, a of words like that. Um, smarty What does the word smarty ties mean? Smarty ties. <laughs> <laughs> smarty, smarty, smarty is the part one for somebody. And so if you smartize yourself, somebody is exhorting you to be somebody. Realize your potential. Go to school. Smartize yourself. Achieve your goals. Smartize yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so the other day I posted on Facebook, we have to smartize myself. I didn't get a lot of likes because most of my friends were. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one example, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, guys.